This morning, folks, well, the Prime Minister has put billions of dollars on the table to get the states to build 1.2 million homes by the end of the decade after a National Cabinet meeting with state and territory leaders yesterday. Joining us live now is the Shadow Housing Minister, Michael Suker. Uh, Michael, good to see you. Thanks for your time this morning. So we've got a sweetener there uh, for the states and the councils as well. What do you make of it? Well, it was a complete fizzer, Pete. Um, uh, you know, never has a meeting promised so much and delivered so little, to be quite frank. Uh, in essence, if you're a struggling renter or you're struggling to get a deposit together for a first time or you're struggling with a skyrocketing mortgage, nothing that was said yesterday would be making you feel any better. There's no concrete plans. There's uh, no identified projects of where new homes will be. So um, it was the sort of meeting you have when you need to deal with a political problem to be seen to be doing something without actually delivering anything. And the most galling part, Pete, is sort of the headline of the meeting is this new aspiration of delivering 1.2 million homes over five years. It was just in October that the government announced their 1 million home target that we know they're not going to meet now that construction's fallen off a cliff. So there's no way that can meet this new aspiration. And and the one thing that they would not speak about at all yesterday was their plan to bring in 1.5 million migrants over the next five years with absolutely no idea of where they are going to live. So it was clearly a political exercise. They're not fed income and the millions of Australians struggling with Labor's housing crisis would be feeling no better today. OK, so a, a few points there. Back on, on the point that you made about no identified projects, isn't that up to the states and the councils? Well, they've had months in the lead up to this meeting, Pete. I mean, the Prime Minister's built this meeting up as the seminal moment to address Labor's housing crisis. They've had literally months. Why don't we have an outline of exactly where these proposed homes are going? What are the projects? Who are the partners? Who's delivering them? What's the timeframes? I mean, if you're fair income, they're the sorts of details you've got to give Australians because, you know, I hate to be a cynic, but we've heard it all before. Uh, we've heard it a hundred times before, states and local governments talking about ambitious planning and zoning reforms, and guess what? It keeps getting worse. And so what we saw yesterday was just another one of those very empty, broad promises. Um, the way you get outcomes is to make specific promises. What are yeah. the projects? Where are they? Where is, where is the new land being released? Um, what are the new suburbs that our cities are going to need? Who's going to build them? Who is the government going to partner with? Who's going to fund them? And importantly, who's going to build them? Now, the fact that they are unable to provide any of those details, uh, I think, um, makes it very clear that it's not fed income at all. And just like they didn't make their million home promise that they made in October, in six and 12 months' time, we'll look back at this and say they got nowhere near their 1.2 million home target either. OK. Uh, this has been a problem a decade in the making, though. Why didn't you do it when you were in power? Well, if you look at what we did when we were in government and do the comparisons, uh, it's very embarrassing for this government. Uh, HIA data, which was just out this week, Pete, showed that in 2021 there were nearly 150,000 detached homes built. Next year they're projecting it will be down to 94,000. Um, that is a massive drop in just three years that we've seen occur on this government's watch. So sadly, with housing supply not going forward, not even being maintained at the levels that the, uh, the Labor government inherited, but going backwards, on every single measure, uh, housing outcomes for Australians are going to get worse. First home buyers are down to their lowest level since the Gillard government. Uh, new home starts are down, new home approvals are down, new home sales are down nearly 40 per cent. I mean, the idea that we're in a housing crisis now, um, Australians need to realise it's going to get a whole lot worse. And what the Prime Minister announced yesterday just locks that in. Right. Just locks in that. But a lot of this is, is out now, of his control, though, right? By the year. A lot of this is out of his control. Much of it lies on the states and councils' responsibility, right, to free up more land, to unlock more land, to rezone. Well, he, he, he said he was stepping up and taking responsibility for this. He's the one that built up uh, this meeting of National Cabinet. Let's be frank, in nearly every situation, all he has to do is get, in, get on the phone to a 
Labor mate in one of those states and make it happen. Okay. I mean, he, he has had that opportunity and he said that he would. And so yesterday was so alarming for all of us because, you know, I wasn't expecting a great deal, but even I was pretty gobsmacked at just how much of a fizzer it was. And again, if you're a renter, if you've got a mortgage, if you're trying to save for your first home, uh, nothing you heard yesterday would get you very excited. In fact, depressingly, it just locks in this trajectory of things getting worse and worse. OK. Um, that wasn't you lighting up the flares in Fed Square, was it, last night, Michael? <laughs> uh, no, it wasn't. Um, but, you know, it uh, wouldn't be the first time a flare's been let off. It was, uh, it was an exciting match. And, uh, look, as, as Robbie Slater rightly pointed out, you know, um, credit to... To, uh, to England for, for really playing a great match. But look, that doesn't diminish the fantastic tournament we've had. And, um, you know, it's uh, still taken uh, and captivated the nation. And I think that's something that is a great legacy for okay. the Matildas and uh, it is. for all sport in this country. It is indeed. Michael Suk, appreciate your time. Thank you.